Let's join together in prayer. Precious and loving God, we thank you for the unique love that you bring to our lives. It's a light that gives us something to focus on. It's a light that stirs up the hope that exists in us. Today, help us to find our moments in love, that we can find our place in you and see how love motivates us to do things we could have never dreamed of. Be with us today, God, in this time of conversation. Amen. Last week, we used the narrative of hope and hope being the neighbor, the friendship, the, the, the motivator, the one that'll loan us the cow, the one that'll bring us a cup of sugar, that friend that's there ready to hand us something that we need so that we can get through a task or, or just to get through the day. I want to hold on to that narrative of hope and combine it within a narrative of love. As we go through the sequences of lighting the Advent candles, one of the narratives that I hold on to is how one candle lights the next and the light begins to grow and grow. Today we're going to build off of the glowing light of hope and to see how love makes that light so much stronger so much more stirring that we can do things we had never thought of before. I'd, I'd like to intentionally carry a pop cultural, or cultural focus through these Advent conversations. And last week where I used a narrative of Christopher Reeve explaining what Superman is, Superman, as explained in the narrative of the uh, Man of Steel mythos, that he's a beacon of hope. The Superman is the neighbor that goes out of his way to care for others. Today, I want to use a narrative of love and how love compels us to do greater things. Years and years ago, a movie came out called Hook. Now, Hook is a movie that explains the idea of what if Peter Pan actually grew up. Peter Pan in this movie, uh, Peter Banning, played by Robin Williams, is an image of Peter Pan growing up, moving into the corporate world of all the things, and they really point this out, he becomes a corporate pirate. He, he Peter Pan actually becomes a pirate, and he's the pirate of the corporate world and living up to his adult responsibilities. And there's this narrative that exists within this movie that Peter Pan loses a connection to what it means to be a kid because the more he grows up, and the more that he takes on the responsibilities, the more caregiving focus that he takes on, he loses a connection to his core identity. And he loses a connection to a purity, a childlike purity in his love. And then he forgets how to fly. Now, within the narrative of this movie, and I'll, I'll explain this enough that if you've never seen the movie, you'll understand what I'm trying to share with you today. And hopefully I don't explain it too much that you m maybe lose the desire of actually watching this film. This is a fantastic movie. It's fun. It's adventurous. It's a, a great fairy tale and it, it is a story about what it means that to find a life that we're blended in our responsibilities 
and we don't lose the narrative of our core identity, which is the things we love and the things that bring us hope and joy, the things that make our spirits fly. Love is that. Love is the thing that makes our spirits fly. But sometimes, you know, the, the, old, the old saying of fun flies when you're having time. And I'm, I'm going to say that one more time because many of you have never heard that colloquialism before. You've heard time flies when you're having fun. But I want to say this one more time because we all know it's true and we all agree with it. Fun flies when we're having time. I We exist. We have to go to work. We have to live in our responsibilities. We have to do things. We have to face challenges. We got to make that money so that we can have something to spend when we to go out and have our playtime. We got to pay the bills. We got to keep food on the table. There is so many have-tos that exists in our lives that we find ourselves spending so much time half to wing that we forget to have fun. And then one day we look in the mirror at a 48 year old guy that has lost track of what happiness is. That's why that we got to hold on to that candle of love. Now within this movie, Peter Banning who we know before his children disappear his children disappear because they are are kidnapped by Captain Hook Captain James Hook who also has lost his identity because the playful counterpart to his identity has disappeared even the evil torture meanies need to have happiness and love somewhere in their lives so that they don't age out and dissolve too. Even even Captain James Hook begins to lose his identity because Peter Banning, Peter Pan, grew up. We get to this place that Peter discovers where his kids is. He's transported there by Tinkerbell, but he can't remember how to fly. He can't remember how to be Peter Pan. So he is presented this challenge. He needs one thing to focus on. He needs one thing to lock his senses onto so that he can reconnect to what he loves. He can reconnect to the love of his core identity of being Peter Pan. And then when he locks into this thing, he can fly. That one thing that he locks onto is the love of his children and the things that he should be loving and the things that should be holding on to the top priority not prioritizing the business or the making of money so that he can make ends meet which are heavily important but also remembering the love the source of why that's important focusing on his children makes it so Peter Pan can fly again It's sort of that moment where hope and love combine together in Peter Banning's life. And he remembers the hope that he had as the swashbuckling Peter Pan. And the love that he has for the children that gives meaning to his life. And that hope and love combining together. And then once again, Peter Pan can fly. It's easy to lose hope. Within losing hope, it becomes easy to lose focus on what we love. We become so focused on trying to rebuild hope in our lives, we forget the love that exists there to grab our hands and to lift our spirits and to help our spirits fly. If we can 
refocus on why we love things. The, the building of the, the hope that is the identity of Jesus Christ. Building on the love that is the pure love that transcends all other love and the identity of Jesus Christ. Reconnecting to those things makes life so much brighter. And our spirits begin to fly just as high as Peter Banning returning to the hope of being Peter Pan and flying higher and higher because he remembers what he loves and remembers why all the work has importance. I want you to spend our time through Advent rem- remembering what you love. Yes, it's important to remember the responsibilities, and yes, uh, we hold dire uh, results when we don't live up to our responsibilities. But I want us to take time to remember what we love. I love the reality that Jesus Christ loved me so much that he gave me hope for a greater tomorrow. I love the opportunities that Jesus Christ has has equipped me to be Christ's hands and feet to the world and touching souls and going out and being an image of hope and love through active, active, active caring. And just remembering, yes, there's things that I have to do but I should be, I really should only have to do those 40 hours a week. And if there's eight, if there's 24 hours in a day and there's seven days a week, there is 188 hours. That's quick math in my head. 188 hours a week that I'm only spending 40 of meeting responsibility. So there's 140 hours of hope building and love remembering that can be spent in building relationships and community and more importantly, building memories. Connecting hope and love so that we have a more stable life so we can present a stable life to others. Today, as we celebrate the candles of hope and love, I pray that they stir your souls. I pray that the candles of hope and love transforms your spirits. And I pray that the newness, I pray that the motivation... I pray that the restoration of your spirit. I pray that the restoration of your spirit helps your soul fly, just like Peter Pan reconnecting to his love. Let's join together in prayer. Precious and loving God, thank you for being our light of hope and our light of love. Touch our souls, feed our spirits, that we continue to turn and look for you. In your son's precious and loving name, I pray. Amen.